Hi folks, I'm just going to run down um, how to do the breakout rooms for Microsoft Teams uh, using the Excel spreadsheet that's been set up. Um, first off, you want to make sure you can set up one sheet for each class. Uh, once you have it set up with the kids' names and stuff, it's ready to go and you can just keep recreating as many um, chat rooms as you want uh, for every different day, whatever you have going on. So important things, uh, everything in green is things you should be able to change if you want. Uh, you do need the teacher email. That's going to make the teacher a part of each room and how many students you actually have in your class. I'm only using six students here just to do a demo and it's also six six fellow uh, colleagues. So they're, they're always doing things for me, they never realize. Um, you have as many students as you want. I think I put it up to 45 students, but if you know a little bit of Excel, if you have more than 45 students, God bless you. Um, and uh, it works for any number other than that. So put your six students in. You need, do need their emails based upon what they use in Teams. It's typically a school email, so make sure the emails are correct. It will fail um, and won't give you any warning because, of course, I don't know what your emails are. I don't know if they're correct or not. So double check your emails. <laughs> I know from experience it will fail and it was my own email that was wrong. <laughs> so check your emails. Um, so make sure your emails are correct. Student names. They're only needed for you, so it could be their first name, their last name, just a nickname. It doesn't matter because over here in the student list, it just tells you who's going to end up in each team. So whatever way you want to do the student name is fine. It doesn't go anywhere. It stays in the Excel sheet for you. And then there are two ways to, just, to decide on your groups. One is manually, and you just type the numbers in, and they automatically show up. So if you want them all to be in their own breakout room alone with you, um, that's fine too, I guess, whatever you, whatever you want. Um, just put in one, two, three, four, five, six, and sure enough, they're all in their own group all by themselves. Uh, I'm just going to manually go one, two, one, two, one, two, he says, hopefully. There we go. And so now they're all assigned into groups of three. And notice that you can change the group names. I recommend that. Over time, you're going to get a lot of different groups, and it's likely best if I usually put the course code in, so 3U, and sometimes we'll even put the day in, um, so just to be able to distinguish that, you know, we're only going to use this breakout room for a day, so this was the, the, the 5th of April breakout room for uh, 2D. Okay, so we've got 3U Robins, 3U Blue Jays, and then our, our students, these are the kids, the, the faculty in this case, these are the kids that are going to be in those groups. So that's manual. If I want to switch Win and Shadeen around, I can do that, and it automatically updates on the right. So that's manual. If you use visibly random grouping, or you just want to just randomize folks, switch over here. Uh, ask for the size of the, the groups, or how many people do you want in each group, and then whether we're going to randomize or not. We're going to go ahead and randomize, so we switch it to true. And now this is a random group um, of, of, of students. If you want to um, randomize again, really you just have to change anything on the form uh, and or just hit F9, that will the property of Excel that things uh, re get recalculated. If you look at the, the visibly random grouping, you go, oh geez, Taller and Harris together, that doesn't work. Um, you can either re-randomize or just highlight the, the, the selection for, for the random grouping and come over here and paste values. If you're familiar with Excel, if you just paste, you copy the formula over. You want to copy the values. So if you copy the values over, whoops, yeah, awesome. That's always happening whenever there's a, a recording going on. There you go. Um, so that's pasted over and now I can switch. Um, I don't want Teller and, uh, and uh, Win on the same one. So I'm just going to swap three and two. There we go. All right. So those are now swapped, and now Tyler and Wynn are not in the same team. So the teams are all set up. You can keep playing with it all you want. Up here is their initial message. You want that so that when they go into the room, they see some message from you as a teacher saying, here's what you got to do. Because you know what? They don't always listen. So my message is make sure you look at the rubric. All right. So it's all ready to go now. Um, the link here is the link to the room all set up with the people that are involved, um, the name of the group, it's all ready to go. Now you just have to give it to them. Don't care how you give it to them. You can email it, you can put it in the chat of the main room, um, it doesn't matter. What I tend to do is I actually just copy this whole thing here, copy, 
Then I go over to my OneNote, and I just paste the table in. And it looks like crap. Um, it looks like crap because the links are so long. That's okay. If you're okay with looking like crap, you can leave it like that. But what I do is I right-click, go to link, and I edit the link. And what I don't do, this is a bad thing for OneNote. OneNote highlights the address as if you wanted to change the address. You don't. You want to change the text to display. I wish they defaulted to that. Uh, so this is the 3U Robins. Uh, so I'm just going to call this 3U Robins. And this is the 3U Blue Jay. So I'm going to do the same thing here. And this is, see again, it defaults to the address. And I've screwed that up so many times. Bad OneNote. There we go. So now, when they click on the link, it's going to take a second. Do, do, do. It creates a new room called 3U Robins with the teachers, or the students, I guess in this case, that I've asked to be in the group, and then there's the message here that's all ready to go, and I click on send. Boom. They're in the group, they're ready to go, the room has started, and they're off. What's nice is you have access to all the things you normally have access to um, inside of, of OneNote. You've got your call, you've got your screen sharing, all these other options that you want to do, a whiteboard, you name it, it's ready to go. You got your quick poll down here. Um, yeah. So, if you have any questions, just to, oh, I guess I'll show you the other group too. Let's click in the other group now, 3U Blue Jays, and it's going to flip over in a second. Exact same experience for the kids. They see 3U Blue Jays, they see the people that are involved in that group, and again, I'm going to send that out as well, and the room's now ready to go. Okay. Sorry that took a little bit longer than I thought. Um, let me know if you have any questions and really appreciate it. Thank you. Take care.